Well, hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry this week's video is going to be a day late, but I think I can't start the video unless I talk about the coronavirus and how it's affecting us in the UK. We're pretty much on lockdown. All bars, pubs, clubs, restaurants are closed only essential travel and elderly have been told to self-isolate for 14 weeks ah, not quite sure what they class as elderly but probably me uh, anyway I did a couple of ride out videos and due to the wind noise there the quality is not good enough to upload so I thought, right, we come back to the man cave. And for once we are actually in the man cave. Um, if you're in America, you know, it's a uh, basement, I think. Uh, in the UK, we call it a cellar. So we're actually underneath uh, my house, underground. So it's the closest we can get to a cave. <coughs> so for this week's video, you may have seen me use this a uh, little alcohol stove and they're absolutely brilliant for camping uh, they're made out of a lager can and they weigh absolutely nothing the uh, fuel I had some here somewhere oh there it is uh, <clears throat> just methylated spirits and that bottle there, oh, about half full. And that's done a good two or three camping trips. So, how do you make them? And I, my design is slightly different to the ones you will see on the internet. And I think mine's better. Don't know. What do you guys think? So... <coughs> I go to, I really had to pull out all the stops for this video, so I had to drink a can of lager to get the empty lager can. Now, the one I want to make is a small one, about half that size, because I just want it to take it with me when I want a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. I just want a small, lightweight stove that I can take with me and <coughs> stick my cup on top of metal cup to just get a, a cup or a mug of water so I don't it doesn't have to be that big so on the can I'm gonna cut the bottom off then I'm going to transfer that measurement from this ridge down so that measurement there is that measurement there and then this piece in the middle we will use that to make a um, an inner skin so right <clears throat> oh and the top cut that piece out in true blue Peter style here's one I prepared earlier I'll bring you guys down so you can actually see what uh, I'm looking at instead of looking at me. You want to see what I'm doing. You know what I look like. <clears throat> right, so <clears throat> we've cut the top of the can off. And we've cut that part out of the can. So now we've just got the top piece cut off. <clears throat> we've cut the bottom part of the can off. And that will make our... That will actually hold our fuel. <clears throat> and, ooh, <clears throat> and we've cut a piece out of the middle. And this is going to make our inner wall. So, 
let's get round to putting this together. Mm. <clears throat> that inner dimple, this is going to sit in that to make an inner wall. Mm. So we just need to trim that. You don't have to trim it, but um, it just looks better. So I'll line those up in the wall about there. And this metal is so thin, it cuts really easy. <clears throat> so this is going to be our inner wall. But we need a way for the fuel to get from the inside to the outside. So around the outside of this, I'm just going to cut about four little V's and this will let the fuel flow from the inside to the outside. You don't have to be um, <clears throat> very accurate with this. Close enough is good enough. Now we need to fit this, the top part, inside there. But they're both the same diameter and they don't want to fit. So if you just go around with a pair of pliers, this is my little multi-tool, and just crimp the edges, <clears throat> you will make that slightly smaller and it will with a bit of with a bit of persuasion it will fit inside it now I haven't forgotten this because this is going to sit inside it and it's going to go from the top into that bottom part so we put that inside and it fits quite nicely in there and now we just squeeze the two of them together <clears throat> making sure that the inner wall goes up on the inside Yep, and now what we need to do <coughs> is to make some burner holes because this is where our flame is going to come out and four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. <coughs> And now we need something to make a hole in that. You can use a drawing pin, you can use a, a nail, or anything just to um, <coughs> make the holes in it. But we don't want to puncture that inner wall. <coughs> so if you ever go camping and you forget your stove, A uh, drinks can, which I'm sure we will all have. You can use a Coke can, um, any can really. <clears throat> I've seen these made out of cat food cans. Um, almost done. One more. There we go, <coughs> row of holes, <coughs> uh, let's give it a uh, little bit of fuel, just put a little bit in because we just do a test burn to see what it's like. <coughs> Mm. 
This is why I don't like matches. Mm, because they get damp. The trusty flint. There we go. See, that's why I carry a flint. Matches get damp. Mm. So, right. The, um, <clears throat> the inner part is now a light. But what you will see is you start seeing gas jets come out of these side holes. And it's the actual so gas ring that we will use to cook on. Because with this design, you don't need a pot stand. They, they say it blooms. When it starts coming out of these side holes, they, they say it's blooming. The, uh, the flame is uh, bloomed. It does take a few seconds for it to come up to temperature. <clears throat> but, um, you know, for a freebie camping stove, I think it's well worth it. And it takes five to ten minutes to make. You know, um, I could have done the video of cutting the can and uh, everything, but you know how to cut a can. Stanley knife, blade, pen knife, pair of scissors. It, the burn time on these, of course, depends on how much fuel you've put in them. So, the more fuel you put in, the longer it will burn for. Um, I should have washed this key. It's actually got some... It's a wet can. It's actually got some lager left in it. <laughs> I didn't wash it and dry it properly. <clears throat> but... Any side... No, no, I haven't got any side jets coming out yet. <clears throat> so it's taking a little while to um, <clears throat> to come up to temperature, <clears throat> but this is <clears throat> you can let me move that one to one side while it comes up. <clears throat> if you wanted to buy an alcohol burner, <clears throat> this is what you would get, and this is a. <clears throat> exactly the same as that it's got a ring of outer holes Al um, alcohol goes in the middle and it's uh, it burns in exactly the same way <clears throat> now, I'm not sure yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a you can't really see the uh, flames coming out of that one. <clears throat> and to put it out, I've got a deep tin. And you can just put it out and um, <clears throat> let it cool before you uh, take the alcohol out of it. <clears throat> this one... <clears throat> See, that just so simple. <clears throat> this one is one that I made earlier, <clears throat> and is actually the one I take camping. <clears throat> but they're all exactly the same. <clears throat> oh, this one, because it's dried out a lot more, the. Um, <clears throat> Side jets are coming online a lot quicker. This one actually takes quite a while to uh, heat up, but the um, <clears throat> the drinks can <clears throat> or soda can because the walls are a lot thinner. They heat up a lot quicker, and um, oh, you can start cooking within I don't know a minute. Mm. So on this one, you get a little pot stand, and you get this, which is called a simmering. Now, this goes over the main flame, and the idea is you're supposed to vary the flame, but 
designed for. There should be a way that this clips on to that because you can't you can't close the flame down or open it up. You have to take it off, take best guess, then put it on. And go no that so. I still there we go. This one is now bloomed, and I can stick a pot on that, <coughs> and it won't go out. <coughs> so let's extinguish that one. And again, to put it out, you just put the top over it. <coughs> yeah, so and oh, by the way, this um, wax I'm melting in here. There is a reason I'm melting wax, mm. and I'll come to that in a minute, mm. Mm. because mm. I thought I would show you in a previous video I said I don't take matches <coughs> like this, because as you've just seen they get damp and they just won't light. But <clears throat> there is something you can do to make them a lot better. <clears throat> so, match some kitchen roll. <clears throat> just get them really, really hot. Those alcohol stoves go really well. So, <clears throat> match kitchen roll and some melted wax. <clears throat> Wrap the match in the kitchen roll <clears throat> and then dip it in the melted wax. <clears throat> Give it a good coating. <clears throat> And then just put it somewhere to dry. And again, in true Blue Peter style. <coughs> Here's one I made earlier. I actually used this one. I just wanted to make sure that it would still light. <coughs> and now we have a stormproof match. <coughs> Let me just move that out of the way. <coughs> so, that's why I don't take matches <coughs> just like that. <coughs> Much prefer a little bit of kitchen roll, dip it in some melted wax, and the wax is just these really cheap uh, night lights. Again, I'm came from the uh, pound shop, dollar store, whichever you like to call it, and um, <coughs> melted down on there, and they make excellent fire lighters. <coughs> the, <coughs> the other fire lighters I showed earlier were <coughs> some cotton wool buds and some um, petroleum jelly. Again, these light with a spark. <coughs> but here, the little alcohol stoves, I think they work really, really well. And <coughs> you can vary the size of the holes if you want bigger jets or um, you want it to uh, cook faster or Or you just want something that's just going to simmer away. And I suppose you could, well, you could make one or two and have a double, have a double ring. Because most camping stoves are only a single ring. No, oh, they're still going on just a little, uh, mm, a tiny drop of um, alcohol. Mm. I'd better wipe that up. Before. 
before that um, catches light and I burn down the man cave on the first filming. Mm. So, a do-it-yourself alcohol stove, and you saw how quickly it boiled that wax. Mm. Uh, I have uh, mm. <clears throat> uh, I have here my camp cook set. Mm. 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 And this is one of my little pots, and as you can see, mm -hmm. he burns down the man cave. Mm. I can put the pot on top, and it's relatively stable. Mm. I will get better at doing these videos in time. Mm. <clears throat> so. I hope you found this interesting. I'm going to burn the microphone cable. And um, sorry, it's not a ride out and it's not a, um, oh, we're going to go and see this or do that. But we are on lockdown. And I say no, um, no unnecessary journeys. Mm. So. <clears throat> It's only a short one this week. Oh, let me bring you back up. <clears throat> I don't know how long we are going to be in lockdown before they can say, that's it, we can go back out again. I hope to get some ride outs and I've really got to try and find a way of stopping the wind noise coming through the mic when I'm riding. Two really good videos. Couldn't put them on YouTube because you couldn't hear anything I was saying. It was just, just wind noise. I think I might have to line and um, have to line it with fur to um, break down some of the um, noise. I don't know if that would work. I, I shall try it in the week and see if I can find a solution to it. Mm. But thanks for watching. I hope you like this. If you do. Give me a big thumbs up and I will try and burn something down next week. Thanks guys. See you soon. Bye. Hi guys. Welcome back to the channel. Well, no motorbike in the beginning this week. I'm actually taking Harvey out for a walk. There he is down there. Well, I don't think I can start this video without mentioning something about the coronavirus. We're pretty much in lockdown now. Pubs, clubs, um sports facilities, anywhere where people meet have now been told to close. Um, the elderly, not quite sure what they class as elderly, probably me, have been told to self-isolate for up to 14 weeks. So I'm self-isolating uh, in a disused quarry. Not many people come down here, uh, mainly because the banks are so steep and if you get down, there's no guarantee you're going to get back out again. And but the dog likes it down here. Oh, we've got a tree down. <coughs> it's 
excuse me why I limbo under this. And yes, that's what I'm going to try and climb. So I could be puffing a bit by the time we reach the top of that. But the dog's okay. He's got four wheel drive. Let's see. Oh, whose silly idea was this? Uh, I'm sorry the video is going to be a uh, a day late this week. I normally do the video in during the week and upload upload on a mon uh, on a Sunday. But oh, because of this coronavirus everything got put on hold uh, I think we've been food shopping about four times just to try and get the necessities why people are still hauling toilet roll I don't know but it's one thing we couldn't get so I've resorted to using lettuce leaves. I know, it's just the tip of the iceberg. <clears throat> You've got to have some humour in these situations. So, that is where we've just come from. And that is the way we're going. Oh, I'm just trying to get my breath back. That was a steep climb. And I'm um, really not in the best of uh, shape. Well, I suppose round is a shape. It's probably why I can't get the bike to go over 70. It's just the amount of weight it's carrying. This is the first time I've been in here since the uh, winter. So I'm hoping these tracks are still open. Loads of fallen trees. But the track looks pretty well worn. Don't know if it's native animals. We do have a lot of deer, badgers in this area so this could be an old deer track. Oh, and see the strong winds have uprooted a few trees. <sighs> Loads of free firewood for anyone that uh, wanted it. Ah, and talking about limboing. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> uh. Well, made that one okay. So far, so good. The dog's okay, he can fit through any little gap. And uh, I'm sure he thinks, oh, I've gone through it, so you can. I've still not had uh, any deliveries from Amazon or Wish or Banggood. So, what was I waiting for? Oh yeah, front and rear sprocket. They still haven't come. Um, camping stove. That still not turned up. I uh, can't think what else I was waiting for. Oh no, I've got five or six orders that I should have received many, many weeks ago. And I know they're on a slow boat from China, but they should have been dispatched before the coronavirus kicked off. That's if they're telling us the right dates. Oh, woodpecker. Not sure if the mic picked that up. But there's a woodpecker somewhere around here pecking wood. 
So, <clears throat> I've got a few ideas for the man cave when we get back and new set an actual man cave <clears throat> I have um, if you're in America you call it a basement if you're in the UK it's a cellar so it is underground so technically it's kind of a cave and I've, I've put some racking in there I've painted the walls um, put a new floor down actually I should have video doing that might have been of interest to someone oh. well someone's been out here they've uh, made a kind of a shelter so some shack <coughs> uh, could be a wild camper mm. We do get some wild camping round here. Uh, and there's another one over there. So, oh, maybe it is. Hmm. I'll type a little wigwam. Field shelter. Hmm. So I'm not sure how far we can go along this path before we get a falling tree that I can't either get over or under but the end of this path takes you to the uh, lakes where I rode to on the bike a couple of videos ago oh, that's what I was waiting for the dead cat for the uh, mic in my um, lid still not turned up I did a ride out yesterday and there was so much wind noise I just deleted the video you, you couldn't hear anything it was just for the whole video but it was very windy and I wasn't hanging around <clears throat> so <clears throat> I've, I've repositioned the mic I've now got it directly in front of um, my mouth in the uh, bash app. I did have it on the side. So we will see if that's made any difference. I've got a video uploading now of that. So hopefully there will be a, a bit of a ride out video. And I think after this we go back to the man cave and uh, oh, there's another fuel shelter, cross members, and um, pieces lay laying up. So it makes me think that someone or quite a few people have been wild camping out here. I'm not sure it'd be my. Uh, I don't think wild camping's for me. I prefer a uh, tent and a nice sleeping bag and uh, have we come to the end of the road I wonder if I can make it up there it looks like there's a fallen tree blocking that side let's go and have a look mm. uh, I was going yeah come on you get through there Oh, he's gung ho. Yeah, yeah, I know you can do it. I'm not quite. No, I'm not going to get through there. Uh, there's a kind of a path going up the top. Or shall we try that one? Let's try this one. Are well, you going that way? Oh, go on in. Show, show me the way. The dog thinks he's found a way. So, <coughs> like most things, <coughs> I follow the dog. Oh dear, this is rather steep. <coughs> uh, 
and I'm trying to do it one-handed as well. Oh, well, made it to the top. Let's give you guys a look around. That's what we've just climbed up. And it looks like there's an old road that goes down to the bottom. Mm. Along here, there's loads of piles of stones. And I'm not sure if they're, uh, I don't know, huts or houses that have collapsed. But that tree there is not native to the UK. Uh, that definitely isn't. So I'm wondering if this was someone's garden at one point. Mm. And their stone built house has fallen down. But there, there's about eight of those rock piles along here. So I don't know if they are or were cottages, stone built houses of some description. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop this now and I'll bring you back on when we're near the lakes. So, see you in a minute. Well, hi guys, welcome back. We're now at the back of the lakes. <clears throat> That's where I parked the uh, bike a few weeks ago by that red car. Uh, the lakes are still very, very low. Oh, I'm getting getting tangled up with a dog lead but it's a lovely day it's about 12 degrees that's warm for the UK I did actually pass a couple of guys up on the uh, top track uh, uh, just wandering around so as you can see it is pretty much empty you've just got a well it's gone back to the original path of the river before the dam was put in I keep saying dam it's a weir uh, uh, mm. And it's due to the uh, heavy rains uh, back during the winter time when the weir got washed away that our, the river level dropped. Uh, I thought they'd repaired it, but obviously they haven't. Uh, uh, as you can see, the uh, oh, it's still got quite a good flow on the river. But we no longer have a mill pond as such. <coughs> so, if any of you guys are into wildlife or um, nature, hopefully, you'll enjoy this video. just so peaceful. I mean, listen to this. No cars, no aeroplanes. Oh, that's another thing that's strange. Not seeing any aeroplanes. The skies are empty. Which, 
I'm sure it's a good thing for the planet because they're no longer polluting the skies so uh, some good may come out of this coronavirus after all during the summer this gets absolutely packed down here uh, there's a there's a little bridge about a hundred meters ahead and I don't know I suppose a little beach area because we are we're on sand and this is an old um, and this is an old sandstone quarry so I suppose technically the river's man-made I was thinking of coming down that way and then thought better of it so I actually walked all the way along the top and came around a circular route and I thought oh, if I lose it coming down there although it may have made for an entertaining video I would have ended up in there and it's not warm enough to go for a swim yet mm. so you're going to start hearing running water soon here we go here's our little bridge can't see any fishy wishes in there uh, I will do a walk later in a later video and show you the uh, the source of this there's about 20 springs all in a uh, about a 10 meter area actually there's one spring there you can actually see it just bubbling up from the ground and running in comes from over there by those yellow flowers so all of our water around here is uh, pretty good quality <coughs> this is a capped spring springs underneath there and um, it just feeds through this pipe straight into the um, straight into the stream it's not a sewage pipe it's actually a capped spring <coughs> somehow if we go down here mm. <sighs> I know you don't want to go on down here uh, he always takes the four wheel drive route <coughs> so <sighs> this is actually quite muddy but <sighs> in the summer this is all believe it or not golden sand Uh, no, I cannot see any fishes at all. Um, because it's spring water and it's only um, about a kilometre that way, you don't really get many fish up this far because there's nothing for them to eat. The water is still too clean. There's no food in there. But you do get the odd um, eel and sometimes the fish swim upstream I suppose because they can <coughs> quite a nice place to come in the summer and have a cup of coffee and have a paddle in the stream <coughs> dog's had enough, he's, uh, that's it, he's already made his way out <coughs> I'm keeping him on his lead because we're quite close to a road and I don't want him running out in the in the traffic although there shouldn't be much traffic around at this time so mm, that's our little nature reserve and uh, hope you enjoyed the walk 
so I'm going to bring this video to a close here and I'll say right <coughs> I'll see you back in the man cave for part two catch you guys later bye